Bet you didn't know this. Dan Hurley, head coach of the University of Connecticut Huskies basketball team, national championship basketball team, is a Bengals fan. Told you. I bet you're surprised. He tells us why. He gives three distinct reasons why he's a Bengals fan. And he still is to this day. It's all over Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And when you hear him talk about what basketball has meant to him, to his family, to his life, it's uh, it's 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 really unbelievable. Uh, he is uh, he's a special guy. He coaches his players hard. He coaches them hard out of love, and they get results. You're gonna like Dan Hurley after you hear his podcast. It'll be impossible not to. I know I do. Or did you make a smart decision today to tune into In the Trenches with Dave Lapham? Brought to you by First Star Logistics because we have ourselves a gem. What a guest we have. <laughs> Head coach of the national champion, University of Connecticut Huskies, Mr. Dan Hurley. Coach, we certainly do appreciate your time. I know it's valuable for you carving some out for us. Can't thank you enough. Yeah, I just hope I don't hurt you with your – with your Xavier and, and Cincinnati uh, crossover fans. I could, you could lose some downloads on this one because I, I don't have that many collegiate friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear you. But, but I'll tell you, that it, it's uh, what what led you? I, I understand you're a Bengals fan, Coach. What Where'd that come from? How did that all occur? Well, it, it's uh, – I mean, there's a couple of different uh, components to it, really. It was um, – you know, first, it really is three things. First game I ever saw that at least consciously as a, as a child um, of, of NFL football was that, was that Chargers uh, Bengals game, uh, the freezer ball. You mm. know, with, yeah. And um, I was drawn, obviously the helmet, you're a little kid. So tiger stripes, but then, sure. but then also too the, uh, you know, like when the Bengals ran out, it was like, it seemed like mostly just pads, jersey, and when the and when the Chargers came out, it was Parker's, Scully's, hats. And for being from Jersey City, I'm like, I, I like those guys. They seem tougher. Um, and then I'm lefty, so you know, Boomer coming in and being drafted and being from Long Island, uh, you know, that there was the connection there. And then yeah. really, the third piece was the one college job that my dad almost took. Um, as a high school coach over the course of his 50 year career at St. Anthony, he almost took an assistant job with Pete Gillen at Xavier. Um, and that was the one time where, where he considered it and he got us all excited about potentially moving to Cincinnati. So that was kind of, the, that was the, the, the perfect storm. Man, that's great. I have the freezer bowl. That's a memory. I mean, I ran around for over three hours out there, coach couldn't break a sweat. That was brutal. That was brutal. That was like didn't even come close to breaking a sweat, man. It was it was unbelievable. Do you um, think about that Super Bowl, Dave? I mean, do you ever? How yeah. often do you think about the a those lot. goal line situation? I just go through every snap of the goal line stand. You know, it's like, oh man, if yeah. and if only this, if only that, if only if if if. But yeah, yeah it's uh, it's absolutely crazy. Now wait, talk about tough. All right, 2019. Disc surgery, replace two discs in your neck. You get artificial discs in your neck. You return to work in less than two weeks. That's tough, coach. What the heck? I mean, two weeks after surgery, you're back at work. What's up? Yeah, I didn't miss a practice, too. Um, and um, actually, the recruiting period started about uh, maybe about three days after my surgery. Really? And, um, you know, the final four – most most outstanding player, Adama Sinogo. I was actually at his high school with the sutures in my neck and used a little bit of blood that was still on the <laughs> – but I, I knew I needed to get that guy. And against doctor's orders, I was in, like, Elizabeth, New Jersey, in, like, a an old gym securing a commitment. So, uh, wow. you know. That's unbelievable. That's yeah. unbelievable. So you, your dad, you mentioned your dad, 50 years coaching – Bob Hurley, senior Hall of Fame high school coach. I mean, just unbelievable. St. Anthony's High School. How about you? Your senior year, you guys go thirty-one and one, 
number two in the nation. I mean, playing for your dad and, and winning a, a, a like basically almost a national title, going 30, 31 and one. And, and then your brother, Bobby, a great player there and national championship at Duke. You win a national championship at UConn. Your son's playing for you on that national chip. I mean, you guys are the, the Hurley family is the first family of basketball. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's amazing, really. Um, you know, just I'd say growing up in Jersey City, it's like, um, you know, you, it's, it's, you know, critically important. It's a, it's a, it's a tough place to grow up and you got to be a tough person, uh, you know, to succeed there and, and uh, you know, to, to accomplish things beyond there. And, it, you know, basketball, you know, since as early as I can remember has been like the, you know, the, the central, the central part of my life um, and our family's life. It was something that, um, you know, was uh, such a huge part of our identity. Um, and when you grow up in a family like mine, it's, um, you know, you just, you become very comfortable, um, you know, in, in pressurized situations and in, in, in super competitive environments, because, you know, for, for me growing up, it was just constant comparisons after, after any game I ever played, it was, well, uh, how would that compare to how Bobby would have played, which is a tough comp. <laughs> you know, Bob's maybe the greatest point guard ever to play college basketball. Um, yeah. And then every game I've ever coached, the, the, you know, there's been, you know, a comparison to Bob Hurley Sr., one of the greatest coaches of his generation at any level. Um, so, you know, I think I was the perfect fit for the UConn job um, when it became open, uh, you know, a couple of years back because – you got to have thick skin here. You got to be tough minded individual because uh, on the other side of the building, I got Gino Ariema, who's won 11 national championships. Right. And I followed Coach Calhoun, who's who's got three. And the standards are as high as they could be uh, at this place. So uh, definitely the Hurley background, man, in Jersey City. Uh, yeah, this job suits me. It, it, it's amazing. I mean, I can only imagine what it would be like to win a national championship with my son on the team. Very few fathers get to experience that with their sons. What was it like winning the national championship with your son Andrew as part of the uh, part of the foot basketball team at UConn? Yeah, I would say um, you know going through the, the 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 you know going through the the whole journey. You know, it's like even um, you know we we get off to an incredible start, and then we. we can't get out of our own way in January. Um, you know, just having, you know, my son Andrew with me, um, just, it, it had a, a, like a settling effect. Um, I don't want to say a calming effect because people see me on the sideline and the last thing they think is calm, but. Uh, I love you coach. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, just to, you know, you sacrifice so much in coaching with, with your, with your, with your children and your wife, you right. miss a lot of things. Um, so to have him on the team and to be around each other every single day. Now I missed so much when he was in grammar school. I missed so much when he was in high school to kind of go through the emotional ups and downs, the suffering, the joy, um, th those cool moments right before tip off, you know, where we, where we share a joke or, um, you know, or he's, you know, he's picking me up after a tough loss or going into a big timeout. He's coming over, tap me on the back. Yeah, you know, we got this, we got this old man, you know, like that stuff, you know, plus I got him in all six games in the NCAA tournament because we smoked everybody. So um, that made me, it put me in a good spot at home with, with my wife, Andrea. Like <laughs> the food was so good for like that, that next 10 days at home, man. It was, I ate like a king. <laughs> so coach, uh, Bobby, your brother, great athlete, you're great athlete yourself. My question is, Melissa, your sister, mm. growing up with two brothers like that, how good an athlete is Melissa? She has to be pretty darn good. Melissa is a good athlete. Um, you know, it, I think it's like my dad pushed, you know, Bob the hardest and the furthest. And then, you know, I think, um, you know, it, it was intense. And I think, you know, he probably backed off a little bit off of me. <laughs> and, and then Melissa, he was like, you know what, I think I'm done. Um, you know, so... She was a heck of a softball player. Um, really? Yeah, she didn't play so much of hoops, but she was a really good softball player. And then she just became like the team big sister, you know, like 
uh, St. Anthony just became, uh, you know, so much part of our family's identity that, you know, like my mom was the scores keeper. And then my, my sister became like, you know, number one fan slash big sister. So, um, but she was a good athlete. It, it, it's incredible. Cause I, I can, I can vividly remember the TV shot of your dad, Bob senior and your brother, Bob jr. In the stands watching you win a national championship. I mean, that family perspective, I mean, it just, it kind of, it got to me, you know, I mean, I've got a couple of brothers that played sports and I, I just know how important it is in families like that. That had to be an unbelievably special moment for everybody. Yeah, it is. And, and, and it was, and you know, you, you still process a lot of it too. You know, it's, you're so busy after you win it, you're doing all you know, a ton of media and white house, you're doing all this crazy stuff. And, and, uh, you don't have enough time to kind of just like sit and think and process it. Um, you know, but a lot of what you think about for me over the course of the last couple of months is how much that meant to me just, uh, you know, as a man, as, as kind of the youngest of, of us, um, you always are striving for your older brother's uh, approval. You know, you're always, you know, as a man, you, you want your dad's approval. You want to finally feel like, um, you know, you proved yourself in a way. Yeah. Uh, you know, because of how elite they were in my playing career at Seton Hall, you know, I, I you know, it was disappointing. It wasn't, I wasn't as good as I should have been. Um, but having a moment when you're 50 years old and you finally feel like you get the approval of your big brother um, and your dad, that was a moment. You mentioned uh, Seton Hall. Uh, you're a point guard there. So you're the quarterback of the whole city. So you're like a coach on the floor. And your coach was PJ Carlissimo. For your first three years, how, how big an impact did PJ have on you? I mean, your dad obviously massive impact on you, not only as a coach but as a dad. But how about PJ? Oof, um, you know, incredible impact uh, in terms of like uh, you know, from a coaching standpoint, or from a basketball standpoint, or for um, you know, just being successful. Uh, I think what I learned from PJ is like understand what your identity is and and. And, and, and perfect that, like, uh, you know, whether it's your team as a coach, understanding that identity and don't let them stray from it, or just, you know, as you as an individual, know your strengths, know your weaknesses and um, and, and play to those uh, every single day in everything you do. I mean, three-time NBA head coach, uh, you know, had Seton Hall on the cusp of winning a national championship, which is, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if they've been to an Elite Eight since PJ's left or even the sweet 16, maybe one, that's how incredible PJ was. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the blessing of playing for two, you know, two of the best to ever do it at the high school and college level is amazing. You mentioned that uh, you had some tough times during the course of the season last year, your national championship season, but when, when you had to play your best, you want to play your best at the right time of the season. You guys were playing your best at the right time of the season. There is no question about that. You just got off the court here uh, recently. Just finished a practice. What's what's the club look like this year, Coach? Yeah, you know it's uh, we worked really hard this summer. I think um, maybe even more so than any summer we've ever had because I think you're just you're so dialed into uh, you know any cracks in your culture um, that are caused by complacency and the complacency of of winning, winning the national championship. So, you know, I've probably been you know more maniacal. Um, <laughs> in, in practice, more demanding, uh, more intense. And uh, we have a, a, a very talented team. I think uh, our starting five has a chance, uh, I think, to be as good as, as any starting five in the country. We've got shooting. Uh, we've, we've got veteran players. Uh, we've got potential uh, lottery picks. Um, I think our whole season is going to come down to, you know, can, can I build that depth? Uh, can I build that bench? where we could go eight, nine, potentially even 10 deep, which was why we were so fresh in March um, and, and so hard to beat uh, in tournament play. Uh, right. Obviously, we got a little bit beat up, you know, in the Big East, but, you know, the Big East will do that to you. It, it's the best conference in the country for college basketball. The Big East and then non-conference next year, 23-24 schedule. I saw Indiana, Kansas, North Carolina, Gonzaga tournament you're either going to play i think it's texas or louisville depending on what takes place i mean coach who don't you play man it's unbelievable <laughs> yeah right it's like and it wasn't you know is 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 
as, as great as the brand is at UConn, right? Five national championships the last 25 years, which I think like, you know, Duke's got three, Kentucky's got two, right? So like when you think about brands, the first brand that you don't think about is usually UConn, but we've won the most trophies, yeah. especially recent history wise. And it, we weren't really able to get those like super, uh, super appealing uh, non-conference games until we won, we won it. And then all of a sudden, all right, you got Carolina at the garden, you're at Kansas, Gonzaga in Seattle, Amazing. Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's exciting. And it, it's the benefit. It's like when you, you know, it's like our Bengals when we weren't very good, we weren't playing too many games on national TV on Sunday night football and whatnot. So now, you know, we get those big games because we won the big trophy. You're right, coach. We're playing at one o'clock on Sunday every game. It's like, man, when are we gonna when are we gonna taste uh, taste a little bit a little bit of the drink, drink some of that good wine? And you're drinking a lot of it now. Yeah. And the, the thing you mentioned the word culture, and honestly, if I if I had to pick, you know, a, a word that would state why this football team has had the success they've had uh, in this run, winning back to back division titles, and since the AFC North has been formed in 2002, nobody has ever won three in a row. So the Bengals could be the first to do that. Culture. You, you, you mentioned that word culture. Man, the culture at with this organization, with this team, is as good as I've ever seen it. I mean, it is second to none. That's what seems like you pride yourself in that as well. Yeah. What well, well, are they, um, you know, they uh... – what is that culture eats eat strategy for you know for breakfast or whatever you know um yeah i mean i feel like when we go to the games um you know we're, we're up five nothing maybe maybe six nothing because um because of how hard we play um it, because uh, of how unselfish the people are that we bring into the organization uh you know the the preparation the commitment um, you know, the fact that we don't lie, we don't cheat in recruiting. Um, so people come to us because they want to be a part of our culture. You know, they come, they visit, uh, they spend 48 hours with us. Um, they love the way we train. They, they love the way in a real old school way that um, our players here allow us to coach them and, and to coach them really hard and to get the most out of them. And, you know, they allow us to be truth tellers um, in their lives. Uh, but, you know, we work really, really hard at the relationship that we build with our players and we build with their parents so that we can be honest with everybody um, about where the growth has got to occur, where the improvements got to occur. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, for me, it's uh, I want people when they when they watch our team play, you know, when, when a player goes down on the court, uh, you know, to see uh, four players sprinting over uh, to pick them up. Um, I, I want to see the most live bench cheering for each other that you'll see the whole season in college. I think, uh, you know, when we get on an airplane, I want uh, to get an email from, uh, you know, from the flight company talking about how great a gentleman we have. So to me, that means as much as the trophy. Coach, you're, uh, you're coaching them not only in basketball, but you're coaching them in life. I mean, you, you know, when, when kids leave your program, they're ready to go out there and make contributions uh, to the world in life. You know, that's, that's really what it's all about too. Right. Amen. And um, you know, I think when you're in high school, you, you still have, you know, you still have the college coaches or the, or the university um, as kind of a, a um, you know, safety net, but really, you know, your college coaches um, and the education that you're going to get, through sports, in, in, in human nature, human behavior, what leads to success, what leads to failure. I mean, it, this is like the last line of, of defense, I guess, in terms of people that are going to prepare you for the next 50, 60 years of your life. You know, like you go to the Knicks uh, or you work uh, at Apple um, or you get a job, you know, teaching or working at UConn, you better be equipped uh, you know, to know everything that you need to know about yourself and, and your habits and behaviors need to be in line with what it's going to take to, to be successful in work, to be successful in relationships, uh, you know, to live a happy, productive life. I know what it's like, um, you know, you, you achieve a level of success and it's like, oh man, that was so hard to get that championship or get there. 
And then you look at the dynasties, you know, like the the Wooden Dynasty in, in college basketball, the Lombardi Dynasty in, in football. I mean, it's like there's no seat at the top of the ladder of success. I mean, you're climbing at one rung at a time. You get there. Everybody's trying to knock you off, man. There's no seat up there. So winning it is one thing. But sustaining that level of success like you're doing and have done, that's that's unbelievably difficult, man. Yeah. And, you know, it, it didn't feel, you know, I think maybe if you'd say like, in the moment, incredible feeling. Um, but it really, it did, that didn't sustain very long. Like the, you very quickly do get your mind wrapped around how badly you want to experience that again, you know? <laughs> and then like you get this thing with your team and just from, from, from running through that tournament like that, you, you, there's this feeling you have about the people that you do that with that you, you want to feel that way about another group of men you know, and, and, uh, experience that whole thing. And so I would say, I didn't like, I haven't, in, uh, I was about to say, I didn't like this. <laughs> uh, I'm not a normal person. So, um, like I didn't stay on cloud nine very long. I got my sights set uh, on winning the next one and, 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 and trying to get that feeling back. And it, I, I, if anything, I'm just glad that I'll be able to go into the season probably with more confidence than I've ever had as a coach, you know, cause if, if you've never gotten over the hump and, and, yeah, you know, I think maybe you 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 carry a, a burden of pressure, and then maybe your your team becomes uptight, and you know, and you've not kind of gotten over the hump. I think my team's moving forward to even be more dangerous because uh, my whole organization now knows that that we can do it. My first line coach uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals was a gentleman named Bill Tiger Johnson, who was our head coach for a period of time as well, and I, I adored the guy. I mean, he was like, man, he was he was everything to me, and. He said, after I made the team the first year as a rookie, he sat me down. He goes, Dave, I'm going to tell you something, man. He goes, you should try to do this as long as you can. Congratulations on making it. Try to do it as long as you can. He goes, because I'm telling you, you will never, ever have another job where the camaraderie and the feeling for each other and the team together, it's never, ever going to be like it is in sports, in any other business, any other walk of life. And man, was he so right. And it's, it's, it's so unique, isn't it? I mean, the bonds, the bonds are forever. I mean, I, I'll, I'm forever friends with guys that I, you know, you go, you go to, you go to battle with, you know, and it sounds cornball, but man, it's just, it's so unique, that feeling. Yeah. And that's probably, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you could do with, with, with your life post football, but you know, you, you, you're, your, your love of being a bangle and, you know, you're still a part of it and you're still so close to the locker room and the players and the competition, but that tribal feel, um, you know, like, you know, the, obviously the highs of winning, um, you know, experiencing that with a group, the, the celebrations, you know, the suffering together and having to dig your way out of it and, and show, show, you know, show your resilience and, and doing that with a, with a group of men and, and it just, I mean, striving for a common goal and you know, even the coming up short part of it. I mean, just striving for things with a group of like-minded people. Um, I, I, don't, I just don't think there's anything like that feeling of community and and, uh, and what you mean for each other in your lives and, and um, the memories you'll have and, and obviously how you rub off on each other. You know, it's like players' personalities and coaches I've coached with. I've like kind of adopted that, you know, different lingo and you, you just become a creation of all the, the men that you've kind of like served with on teams. Coach, let me, let me, uh, let me wrap it up and get you out of here on this. And again, I, I just can't thank you enough for the time that you've given. And I feel like I've learned, I've learned a bunch just by spending this time with you, coach, man, you're, you, you're just pearls of wisdom. Unbelievable. Let me ask you this. Come on, Dave. <laughs> All right, goal setting. Are you are you a guy? Are you a pie in the sky goal setter guy, or are you a guy that has intermediate goals along the way? And pretty soon again, you're climbing that ladder of success, and you're getting there one rung at a time. Then all of a sudden, boy, you've reached it. How how do you handle the goal setting side of things in your life and your profession? Yeah, I, listen. I just like I, I think. Um, you know, you'll hear, you know, the, the great coaches, you know, talk about process, you know, and Nick Saban, you know, process, you know, focused. I'm really process focused in terms of, um, 
you know, the, the, the way that you coach, right. The, the, the buildup of drills, um, and fundamentals and techniques, uh, you know, to, to live play eventually, which turns into, you know, you know, tactics and, you know, like, so very processed, you know, driven, um, you know, that way in terms of, you know, developing my team, um, you know, like I, I thirst and, and, uh, you know, have, a, um, a real thirst for like the, you know, to become a master of coaching and, and all the different aspects of it from player development to relationship building to, uh, you know, to the tactical part of it, to the psychology and motivation, to the marketing, like this thing, to the recruiting, um, there's so many aspects of being a great coach that you're never going to master, but I like chase that mastery in reading, you know, listening to podcasts, you know, watching anything that I could devour online about the great coaches and leaders. Um, you know, so, you know, for me, it's like I coach uh, in my mind, uh, I've got two chips on my shoulders. Like I've never won anything. Um, I think that's just a mentality that I have, uh, from where I'm from and, and, and what my dad stood for. But um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 when I was at Rhode Island, you know, I think my mindset was like, let's, let, let's be the best program in the Atlantic 10 um, and let's, let, let's advance in the NCAA tournament. I think those were like, like goals I had for our program. So we carried around trophies of the Atlantic 10 everywhere we went and big posters of the NCAA tournament round of 32. Um, yeah, when I got the UConn job, I put away, um, you know, the, obviously those type of trophies and it's all been about like pursuing a national championship. And now it's about, you know, pursuing multiple ones. And for me in my career, um, I wanted to be an elite coach, um, you know, before I got here, you know, and, and now for me personally, I want to be a hall of fame coach. So, uh, I'm, I'm gonna work my ass off to make that happen. Coach, you're elite. And there's no doubt in my mind, you're going to be a hall of fame coach. And two things that all the great coaches that I had at every level of sports, when I look back on it, there were two things that all of them had. They cared about their players, their fellow coaches. They cared about people. Mm. And man, like you talked about, you don't lie. You don't cheat. Trust, yeah. man. Implicit trust. I mean, all the great coaches I had, I could trust them with everything and anything, you know? And oh, I think those, those two things are – are big and that's what you're all about coach no doubt about it no doubt man it's uh you know when, when you give uh you know when, when you when you give uh you know the greatest gift you could give your 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 players and you know and, and at your time right like the the amount of time that we invest in them uh, on a daily basis uh yeah and that and that true love for them to absolutely reach their potential um yeah it, it leads to a unique relationship so when you see me you know coaching these guys <laughs> you know, as intensely as we do here at UConn, it's, it's, uh, you know, there, there's so much love and there's so much family behind that. No doubt. Later, Dave. It was an honor, man. Thank you, brother. It was my distinct pleasure and honor. You're the best. Have a great year, man. Who day? Don't boo Hootay. me when I come to, hey, if you go at the game, don't boo me when I'm in Cincinnati, all right? No way. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Later, man. Dave have a good here. one. And every day, I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. King.